Hi, my name is Mr. Garrett. Um, this video is designed to describe three fundamental issues that I believe need to be in place before any student starts the horn. They are the shape of the lips, the placement of the tongue, and the placement of the mouthpiece on the lips. Number one, the shape of the lips. The first thing a student should do when learning the horn is to take a mirror and practice making the following shape. This shape is a rolling in of the lips and a gentle touching of the lips in the very center with a slight feeling of the upper lip in front of the lower lip. Not this, not this, but too much upper lip, just a natural rolling in. Very simple. The second fundamental issue is the placement of the tongue. Due to the fact that the horn routinely plays up to the 16th partial of the harmonic series, it is crucial that when we train the student, we need to train them to have their tongue high at all times. I have found that a simple sizzle exercise demonstrates the proper tongue placement, which is simply this forces the tongue to be up in a, a place that allows the air to be focused, and that is what we want. The throat should actually be relaxed. You don't want to teach them to try to press. It's just nice and relaxed. This also puts the tongue in the ideal spot for tonguing down the road. Or if you want to get them starting on that, you could simply have them sizzle tongue, which is which is just an opening and closing of the valve, very little movement. That's for tonguing is efficiency. Okay. Once those two fundamentals are in place, the student should be able to produce a free buzz, which is a buzz without the mouthpiece, just of the lips, with relative ease. Again, rolled in, tongue in the sizzle position, and it should gently produce this. It doesn't need to be forced. No, nothing like this. That's trumpet. Horn is this. In my opinion, this is the quickest way to tell if a student is doing the right shape and fundamental procedure for the horn. Again, also, you should be, because of this focus, be able to buzz varying ranges relatively easy. If you want to go higher, you roll in a little bit more and firm up balanced around the embouchure, which means sounds like this. So I grip a little more, a little more firmness here, but I maintain the idea of the shape rolling in and touching gently here. If this is able to produce, the next logical step is for students to start doing two of the following free buzzing exercises. Start as high as is easy and do a half step descend and return. And so forth. Maybe as low as you can go. See how the shape stays the same? Okay, there's just a slight unrolling and then back. Slight, very little. As little movement as possible. More, you can go lower. Stays the same. And all the way down. The other thing is sirens, which would be something we'll do on the mouthpiece later. Roll in. I always tell my students that if you start with the right shape and start lowering, you want to do the exact reverse to come back. A lot of times what happens is we free buzz and then lose it. And then you can't get back rolled in. So it needs to be the exact reverse. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it will take a little bit of practice, but I believe if the shape of the lips is right and the tongue is in the right spot, free buzzing is one of the easiest things to do. Third, the third fundamental for success is the placement of the mouthpiece. Now, most people agree that you need two-thirds upper lip, one-third bottom lip. That has been the described uh, ratio. I like to describe the placement as seven-eighths upper lip, one-eighth bottom lip. I think that's a good way of teaching the kids to think about that it really does need to be much higher. And as you'll see, I do put the mouthpiece almost seven-eighths, one-eighth. Okay? Um, so as you see, I'll get a little closer here. Okay, my shape, there we go. Now, 
I basically feel, feel the upper lip completely in the mouthpiece with that shape, lower lip here, and then I kind of, you know, grip. As you can see with that shape, that looks way more like 7 8 one eighth. Okay, and the mouthpiece sits here. It also promotes that downward angle that we are supposed to find. So as you see, this is the shape, more upper lip, put those things together, and you should be able to produce, again, with the tongue being high, that's fundamental number two, you should be able to produce a easy, high, focused buzz. Okay, here we go. Hold the shape. And that should feel relatively easy. Now, I don't have a piano, but that is probably approximately a high B flat on a horn. A high B flat. I have had beginners who have been able to start on that note as a, as a buzz on the mouthpiece, which demonstrates to me that if everything is in the right place, it is very easy. So, with that said, these are the three fundamentals that I believe are the most important for starting kids. You should start high to low, get the lip shape right, get the tongue up, put the mouthpiece 7 8 one eight. When all three of those are in position, you get a beautiful focus buzz. Now, mouthpiece buzzing, just like we're doing the pre-buzzing, you should be able to do that exact same exercise. Actually, there are three. I pr uh, promote all my students to do the first exercise, which is simply this. High buzz start. chromatically down, basically as low as you can go. Key is, you can even notice the shape, coming to that shape. So that as I descend, I'm doing as little change as possible, little as change as possible, little as possible, so that promotes efficiency, okay? Number two, just like the free buzz, the ba da da, that's another exercise that should be done on the horn. Third, or on the mouthpiece, not the horn, excuse me, the mouthpiece. Third and finally, sirens. You should be able to start high, Go a certain range and return back. That promotes this idea of a change, 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 but not getting here, and then back, forward and back. And you basically see how big of a range you can do with those sirens. Start here and back, here and back. As you develop more and back, more and back. Hopefully at some point, whole range to back. I will demonstrate a full range siren. I 100% believe that if the student can demonstrate these simple buzzing techniques, free buzz, mouthpiece buzz, that you will set them up for success for the rest of their life as a horn player. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate your time.